Hello, good morning, ladies. How are you? It is Tuesday, 10 a.m. right now. I am going live with my daily training today. Since it's Tuesday, it's business day. So we are chatting about how to build your communities in person and online. So I'm just going to wait um, a minute or so until I get some people on. If you are here with me, if you are here with me, put a heart or a comment so that I know you're here. I see a couple people watching. So if you can write a comment and just let me know you're here so that I can also make sure that the comments are working. Good morning. Hello, how are you? Are you ready for business training today? I'm gonna tell you just as I wait for a few more people to get on, please write and just say, hey, I'm here in the comments so that I know the comments are working because I know there's gonna be lots of questions today. And if, oh, there we go. Thank you, Janet. Yes, Farheen, thank you ladies for being here, Joanne. Good morning, welcome. I'm excited for business chat today. Um, I, as always, because we talked about routine on our very first training, I'm gonna tell you a couple things I did this morning for my routine while we get a few more ladies on. So my routine this morning, which I'd love to share because my meditation and mantra, I love it, I love it, I love it so much. I'm actually gonna share it on my Instagram as well. And it's something I practice often. So when I'm super busy, or I got lots going on, I do a meditation in the morning and I close my eyes, obviously, I breathe and I think I'm on vacation. I got nothing to do today. And I bottle that emotion, right? So try it with me. So close your eyes and think, I have nothing to do today. I'm on vacation, the world is my oyster, I'm all good. And how do you feel? And I want you to try to ignite and pick up that feeling multiple times throughout this day. So now, if we go back to my training before on emotions and bottling your emotions like potions and feeling whatever you wanna feel when you wanna feel it, that's one of my favorite feelings of being on vacation and having nothing to do and approaching, I have a really busy day today, but approaching everything on my to-do list and all of my meetings with this like carefree, beautiful, like I am just playing with the world today. And today's a beautiful day to play with the world. So I'm gonna start our training on that note. I hope you liked that. So I'm leaving that with you. Today's a beautiful day to play with the world. So just have fun and feel like you got nothing to do. So we're going into business training today and we're talking about growing your community and you'll notice that all of my trainings are linked. So as of last week on Tuesday, we talked about how to survey your audience and know what they need and want. This is still very important when you're building community. So know who you're targeting, be very specific. And then I want you to know what they need and what they want because how you're gonna grow and build your community and the offers you're gonna give them, those all need to be linked. So we're gonna talk about three ways to organically build, well, to build your community organically, but one of the options is paid. So we're gonna talk about three ways to build your community. The first is free content, okay? We're gonna talk about all types of free content you can give and how to build your community. The second is collaborations. How do you collaborate? How do you grow? How do you get the word out there? Both of these options in the beginning, completely free. The second is we're going to quickly chat about ads. You know, I don't know too, too much about ads, but I, what I do know is that right now ad spend on Facebook, Instagram are the cheapest they've ever been because of Corona and COVID. So paying attention to cost, if you're going to pay on ad, spend money on ads, now's the time to do so. I'm even considering it and I've never, I've never had to do it. So we're gonna talk about our first is free content. And we did have some questions come in yesterday about what is paid, what is free, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. So with free content, okay, we have to remember your goal for free content and building a community. 
when you're building a community, and this is something I did wrong in the beginning, that's why I share so much about it right now, is you still want to make sure you have their contact information. So again, everything is linked. What's the purpose of building a community if you, you know, depends what your goal is, but I'm talking from a business perspective. If you're building a community, you want to be able to service them, provide them offers, you know, be able to work with them and continue to engage. All of the platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, yada, yada, you have followers. However, you do not own those followers. Because of different different algorithms, you don't even know and you can't even control who sees your content. And you're putting great content out there. I know you are. So you want people to see it. So you really want to be keeping in mind with all of the free stuff you do, you need their email and or phone number and you want to be able to give an offer and you be very clear on your sales system, your sales funnel. If I'm providing something for free, where are they going into my system? Am I funneling them to an event? Am I funneling them to a, you know, a free PDF? Am I funneling them to work with me? How are they going to work with you? So we need to be very clear on sales funnels. And those are always this, you know, this triangle. And we'll talk a little bit more about that but you wanna be very clear as what is your purpose of giving free content. I'm gonna also go through the different types of free content you can give. Is this clear? If you have questions, ladies, please um, put them in the comment box so I can get to them. So let's chat free content, okay? We have opt-ins. An opt-in is when they have to give you their email to obtain information. That opt-in can be a PDF, an online course and a and or a webinar like a recorded webinar and a free webinar it can also or a free sorry they're both free it can be a recorded or live webinar okay we can also do yeah so i so pdf webinar recorded or live and you can also do live content like i'm doing here and courses But remember, when you're doing live content like this, I'm not obtaining emails from anybody. This is me looking at providing value and continuing to build and grow the community so that we're building our relationship and our connection together and you know more of who I am and what the community holds. So that's more brand building, okay? However, Here's where a lot of people get caught. And I know, I think it was Diana asked this question yesterday when I asked for questions ahead of time. People get really confused of what do I offer for free and what do I offer for paid? We're gonna get into that. I just wanna make sure that I that I outline these three offers and then we'll talk a little bit more about paid, um, paid and free content. So right now we're just talking about free content. Okay, so to recap, we have a PDF, and a downloadable of some sort, you do not have to get fancy. You can use Word, you can use Canva. Canva is my favorite. It's free, go online, you can make something look real pretty, okay? Then we have a webinar. A webinar you can do live or recorded. A little tip, you can also do one live and then take the recording and turn it into an opt-in where they have to give you their email. Then you have lives you know, live content, uh, live training, and then we have courses, okay, like a mini course. Now we go into collaborations, another way to build your community. Collaborations, you want to make sure you're collaborating with the right people. So you want to be looking at their community engagement. Where does their community live currently? Is it on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, email? So you want to ask them their numbers and you want to know where they're at because some people might have huge following on Instagram and not necessarily have the engagement and some may have really great email lists. So you just want to know where their community sits and what's the best way to engage with them so that you can best figure out how you want to collaborate together. Also keeping in mind that collaborations are mutually beneficial. Going back to our training last week, you want to be able to provide value and you want to be able to work together. 
asking someone just to share your stuff is not a collaboration. But if you say, hey, I really love your stuff. I'm doing this. I'd love for us to somehow work together on this project. Maybe I interview you. Maybe we do a webinar together. And then you'll be able to share content easier. So I'll go into some different methods of collaborations as well so that you can kind of get your brain going. Now you can do lives on Facebook, Instagram. You can do webinars, again, recorded or live. You can do interviews and podcasts. You can also do summits. So if you noticed, the ladies community just did an online summit as well. You can do summits and that's a really great way to collaborate and then you're both sharing each other's material and you're both promoting each other. So when you go into a collaboration, see how can I help this person? How can I promote them? And how can we authentically work together? Because I like their message, our communities are similar. I know that our messages will connect to both communities. This is really important, okay? Uh, especially I get tons of people saying, you know, hey, can you share my stuff? Or, hey, can we collaborate? And then when you ask, like, yeah, sure. Like, how do you want to collaborate? They're like, oh, well, I'm doing this. Can you share it? And do you see how it seems obvious when I'm saying it out loud? But I really want you to think about your intention when going into a collaboration. And really always think about how can I actually help this person? It's not about you and not about you building your community. You want to authentically think about how you can help the other person and be of service. Remember last week's training, we just talked all about value. How can you be of service? How can you provide more value? Same goes into collaborations, okay? I just wanna really hit that home because your intention is everything. Then we go into ad spend. Like I said, ads right now are very cheap in comparison to what they have been in the past five years. Now, when looking at your ads, and this is with everything, we're gonna talk a little bit about this, we're gonna go into offers and what's free and what's paid right now. But with your ads, you wanna make sure you're sending them somewhere. You're giving them a call to action. In all of these resources that we just talked about, the free content, collaborations, and ads, always be asking yourself, what call to action am I giving them? Where am I sending them? Again, looking at your sales funnel. Where am I sending them? What's their next part in their journey with me? You want to be thinking about the customer experience and thinking about how is this customer engaging with me? What is their next step? Is it clear how they can work with me? Is it clear where they're going and what information they can now get from me if they want it? Okay, and so often we leave people hanging. We think, you know, here's an ad for this, but then nothing happens. Or here's a webinar, or here's free content, but then they never really know, you know, yes, your relationship building, which is really important, but you want to be very clear throughout the process of what is your, what is your structure look like? And the reason I think that a lot of people don't have clarity, and this was myself included, is I didn't have coaches and the right people helping me build out my funnel. So I didn't understand, number one, how people could work with me, what should be free and what should be paid, and what my sales structure and business and revenue structure actually looked like. So getting really clear on that for yourself will make your consumer and customer journey a lot easier. Is this making sense? Any questions, ladies? Let me know. Um, so now we're gonna go into what is free and what is paid content. So again, this goes back to the triangle that I was talking about, and I keep doing this with my hands, so let me explain. We talked about it last week. Your offers and your business structure is like a triangle. You have free stuff on the bottom, and then as we get closer to the top, the top is your highest offer. So what is the most expensive offer or a way someone can work with you? Is it one-on-one -on -one coaching? Is it a course? Is it a retreat? What is the like epitome that you'd want to get someone to work with you on? And so with that being said, it is useful to have a couple, and I'm not talking like you can have 15, 16, whatever. It makes it a lot more complicated, but just starting with 
you know, one, two or three different ways people can work with you. And that includes your free offer. So you have to really understand what am I going to give for free so that I can give them additional opportunities to work with me and or purchase something if that is a fit. And I think so often people get confused that they're charging for things that should actually be free. So for example, and this is changing a lot because there is a lot of content online. So you want to stand out and you want to build the relationship. You know, you might have heard in the past, you want people to invest, even if it's five or $10 to keep them there, to keep them, you know, to keep them engaged, to help them to show up. And although this is true, this is a separate strategy from email list building and building your community. Because if you can give a webinar and or if you can give a live chat and you can build relationship and then get a client that's paying $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 from that one webinar, then wasn't it useful to do the webinar for free? People need to, you also need to give content to get clients. People need to know who you are. People need to know what they do, They what you do. They need to know if they like you and they actually want to work with you. So if everything's paid, you're putting up a really big barrier that people don't actually know if they want to work with you or not. So even if you follow Gary V, Gary Vanderchuk, he talks a lot about give, 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 give content, give so much stuff for free. But with that philosophy, you have to be very, very clear on your sales funnel and it's okay to build it out. So even right now, I'm still building out some of my sales funnel. I know where I'm going, but it, this stuff takes time. And sometimes you need to be really patient. Actually, all the time you need to be patient with yourself. Not everything's going to be perfect and some things are going to bleed, which means, you know, some things are going to bleed while you're figuring out other things. So maybe your automations are going to bleed while you're figuring it out, out other things, or one part of your offer is going to bleed while you're figuring out other things. And that's okay. But on the horizon, I need you to think about, is it worth doing a free webinar and getting 50 additional emails and building 50 relationships with people that could potentially work with me in the future? Is this making sense? Let me know if you have any questions. And I think it was Diana who asked this question. I'm not sure if you'll, she'll see the replay or if she's here live right now. But if this is clarifying your question and helping you, let me know if this makes sense, what's free and what's paid. Because I do see this being a problem with a lot of business models. You also want to build out your revenue and do a projected business statement. In this, you'll be able to see, is it worth it? to do, you know, three webinars where I'm charging $5 and I'm only going to really be making a few hundred dollars or should I do those for free, build those relationships, potentially get a client that's way more than a hundred dollars, $200. Is that making sense? So you have to really understand your sales funnel. You also have to really understand your business and revenue structure so that you know where your money is coming from. If you're just dipping and you're just charging for everything, people get really confused and you're not able to build your relationship. So always be looking at a lot of content. Another thing that, you know, these some questions that I had from my mentors that are already building multi-million dollar businesses. Number one, I thought, you know, how do I know what to give for free and what to build bigger? so that it is paid. Like, let's say you, you're building a course. How do you build a course if, you know, do you not give some of the information in your course or do you, and you wanna know what the answer was, all of my mentors said, if, you, if someone were to sit there and look at all of my Instagram posts, all of my YouTube videos, all of the content that I put out, they would get my course. But people don't do that. So don't be afraid to share and give information. People will still buy your course because you're putting it together really easy to follow, really simple to go through. 
and people want to work with you in that manner. It can get really confusing to look at all of your Instagram stories, all of your videos, all of your lives, and try to piece that together in a course. Does that make sense? So don't be scared to give out information and to give value because you think you people should be paying for it. You're putting it together in a different way and you're making it really clear for them in a course. I'm also gonna give you one more example. One of my mentors, she makes over $2 million a month. <clears throat> Her business structure is free events and from those free events, she sells her online courses and her in-person courses. Now in person, you know, is not as relevant because we're all home, but she sells her courses. So she gives free events, builds those relationships, gives tons of value and then sells her courses. Okay, so it's just getting really clear again, how are people working with me? If people are coming in through live videos, where can I send them to next? where, you know, am I going to send them to my Instagram? Am I sending them to my email list? Am I sending them to, um, you know, to work with me one-on-one, -on -one? whatever that is, just be very clear and just think about it, have a lot of intention. Okay. So right now, even we've changed and you can change. Don't worry about doing something and thinking, oh man, like I screwed that up or I should change it. Just change it. You know, even with TLC, we've changed our structure so many times. Yes, Janet, excuse me, $2 million a month. Yes, um, but she's amazing. She is great at sales. I can teach you some of the sales techniques she's taught me. Um, and she does business, uh, business coaching. And I actually even find people within your industry that show you it's worth it. And to show you that you can make a difference and you can build a business. So this really goes to business structure. You want to find people in your industry and in different industries and look at their business structure. How, how did they build it? How are they building their community? What does their structure look like? Because building your commu community, what is the purpose of it? Are you doing it just for fun? Are you doing it to sell a course? Are you, you know, and end goal. Obviously your intention is always to help, but what is the purpose? And that's cool. All of those are good answers. You can do it just for fun or you can do it to build a business. But if you're doing it to build a business, you wanna be very clear of your revenue structure. Also knowing, and I always come back to this, just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. The reason yesterday we talked so much about alignment is you need to know what are your gifts? What are you offering? What is your brand? And don't get confused comparing yourself and your revenue structure and how other people build their communities. Well, you can get all of these tips and I'm super happy to continue to provide value, but you need to know what's right for you. So you gotta really tune in and you have to do your research and think, okay, these are my options. What feels right for me in this moment to go down? What path feels right for me? And are there any other options that people aren't doing? You know, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel, but knowing, you know, what is possible and or getting people, mentors, coaches to help you build out your business structure, your revenue structure, your offers, so that when you build community, it's very intentional and you know what is working. It's also really important to gather data. As you're building your community, like I said last week, you always wanna be polling your community. What do you need? What's useful? If you're continuing to provide value, your community will continue to grow. We can talk about Instagram and Facebook strategies and all that later, but today is just looking at really your offers. What is free? What is paid? How do you collaborate? And if you need more, um, more guidance on, on, let's say, what's it called? Like templates and actual things to say, we can talk about that later. But I know we are headed just to the end of our training today. I hope that's helped you. Let me know if you have any questions and or also let me know what resonated most with you today. And if you got any ideas or a better understanding of how to build community, what is most important, and really connecting that to your offer and your business structure. 
I literally probably spent the entire video today doing this with a triangle. So I hope you understand that the community is also really important to understand how the process it, taking one. If you take one single person, think about how are they working with me? Where are they going? If they say yes to this, where do they go? If they say no to this, where do they go? It's like a treat, right? So just give me a like or a comment if you're still there and this was useful to you. I'm just going to see if there were any additional. We also got some uh, questions about different apps. Obviously, there's Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube. There's so many different platforms. I can do another training on all the platforms and what they're good for, but really looking at who is your target demographic and 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 where are they located just like within your collaborations okay so i can't see i don't know if this is facebook or just me but i think tara and anastasia have commented on a post and i don't know if it's my current post but i can't see any other comments let me see um let me know i'm just gonna type in And it could just be Facebook. Let me see. Nope. Okay. So I'm going to sign off for the day. I hope this has helped you. So really think about your takeaways for today. Think about, okay, what are my freebies? Am I going to do pay ads? And how can I collaborate? Get on as many lives and webinars with other people who have similar communities. Even when I did this online summit, I interviewed 34 people for this online summit. And it was amazing because I was also building my network, connecting with amazing entrepreneurs all over the world, England and Australia and the US that I am now able to connect with and we can help each other and figure it out. I was promoting their business, they were promoting the, the summit. And I loved it, loved it, loved it. The summit was amazing, it was so good. So really think about what does that look like for you and just come up with a strategy. So if you need help, let me know, send me a DM. Additionally, I talked about the summit. We got so many messages from you ladies saying how much you love the summit. You are consuming the content. You're still consuming the content because it takes a while to, to go through 34 interviews, but I have decided to make the summit live one more time. So you can still register this week only for the summit and get all 34 interviews. And I did it in like one email, so it's not gonna email blast you. And you can just get all of the summit interviews. We talk about making money, changing your money mindset, uh, business, business structure, copywriting, how to find your target audience. Uh, and what I did in the emails, I have all of the speakers and then I have a summary of what we talked about so you can find the interviews that are most helpful for you, whether it be spirituality and self-development or business or health and fitness. We have lots of those too. So I'm going to put the link in the comments for the summit if you want to get on board with that. And let me know if you have any See, Paige is still going through the summit and really enjoys it. Awesome. Yeah, it can be part of your daily routine. You have basically an interview, a motivational interview for the next month. So let me know if you have any questions about community, building community. This is a, a strategy and a process. And so have fun. DM me if you have any questions. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Sending you lots of love. Tomorrow we are coming back with Mindset. So let me know if you have anything in particular that you want to chat about with regards to mindset and we'll go from there. Love you. Bye for now.